So I've got my nice, uh, well, sort of nice uh, cable rack up here now. So it's holding all these different cables. Uh, I didn't finish it very well, but it's just particle board, so I wasn't too worried about it. And it's holding all these wonderful cables that dangle down and just make a make a mess and, and look kind of messy. Let me get my finger out of the way there. So uh, let's talk about uh, the next thing we're going to do here. Found this old. Uh, uh, what brand is it? Uh, Behringer. They're, they Behringer makes very cheap, uh, inexpensive products. I should say. Let's not say cheap, but then again, I did have a big mixer that eventually died on me uh, in the past. But uh, I replaced it with a smaller one, especially after I gotten rid of some of my keyboards that uh, were just uh, taking up space. And I found they actually found the power supply for it, which uh, quite amazed me. Let's see if we can get that guy plugged in there. There we go. So there's powered up. I really didn't use this for uh, for microphones, so I really didn't need this uh, phantom power thing or the fancy uh, microphone jacks. Once in a while, I'd pl plug in something very low level, so this little this little boost uh, up here was was handy. But you know, I'm probably not using this thing right. I, I plan to use the headphone out. To <laughs> To drive the speakers input for the audio for the big speakers here in the room, and of course it's got the tape in the tape out that I can uh, need to get connected to the computer somehow um, to do this. I used to use a Windows box to to do this with in Sonar, but I've pretty much gotten rid of all the Windows boxes out of frustration and uh, gone with the Windows. So uh, gone with gone with Mac. So I do have. Um, um, garage band and it's uh, upgraded equivalent uh, but in any case um, we need a place to put this and I was thinking well I just put it right there but oh, that's my way and uh, I've got these um, things over on the side here and I'll take a picture with my camera because this used to be the music desk right so I, I would have rack mount and these two bays on the side here and I'll show a picture of one that I've got full of junk right now and I thought well maybe I'd put it over there and kind of incline it a little bit but you know I realized that uh, we have this messy area with the um, with the cables to cover up over here and let's face it with not all the synthesizers that I used to have basically this one is left um, I really don't need that many inputs so it would be nice to be able to run these through the mixer just so I can control the uh, levels. And uh, if we're, uh, if we're uh, working on a project and we want to send something out and process it and send it back, you know, we've got uh, controls. And uh, we'll go upstairs and we'll draw something and then we'll uh, hopefully uh, CNC it out and give it a little finish and get it mounted on the synthesizer and get that mounted on there. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So here we go. So here's a little panel I uh, came up with to uh, mount that um, little mixer to. This little box represents the mixer. Uh, this represents the panel that we're going to be cutting out today. And uh, this is just like a 2x3 board that we'll use to mount it onto the synth cabinet there. Um, we've got a little slot up here to run the cables out that come off the top area of the um, uh, mixer just to route them behind so they look a little bit ne neater. So we'll just throw those through that slot. And uh, this will help to cover up that area of the hanging cables uh, with, with the um, uh, uh, cable holder so that they're not, you know, looking messy on that side of the desk. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and move it out of the way because this is not the part we're cutting. It's going to be this part right here. And I put uh, some little screw holes in here on the side, as you can probably see, just to... Uh, save from having to drill it later on. I might add a little power switch down here or something too. We'll see later. We'll see what happens. I decided not to cut a hole for it right now. So in any case, what we want to do is we want to make a DX, uh, DFX out of this. So we're going to uh, go ahead and select the face. So face priority. We've got the face. Then we'll go ahead and create a sketch. And that's fine. We'll stop the sketch. So now we have the sketch here. 
that we can export or save as a DXF and that's a different project this should go down into here and we'll call this as mixer Now the mixer, I'm just going to stick on there. It's already got Velcro on the back of it. I'm just going to add some new adhesive and, and stick the Velcro pieces on the wood. So we really don't need any mount holes back there. But let's go ahead and import that into the STL cam now. All right. I don't know if you can see it over here, but here it is. It feels pretty doggone solid. It moves the whole synthesizer when we rock it. So it's just a matter of getting it wired up. And get that speaker back into place. I think that works fine. Yep, I don't think there's an issue there. And it covers up some of these cords that are dangling from behind. So you can still easily get these guys out. You just have to pull them out like that. And then when you're ready, just go ahead and push them behind and put them back in. And it covers up the mess of those dangling wires.